So you want to improve your astrophotography. There's a lot of ways to do it. But today, I specifically want to focus in on one particular way to help you improve your astrophotography. We all want images that are crisp and clear and sharp, images that are just stunning, images that you are excited about and want to share with others. In photography, there's a process that we call culling. And culling is just a fancy term for deleting or getting rid of or setting aside so that you no longer have to deal with those particular images. I know that in a landscape photography, I would often go out and I still go out and I'll take literally hundreds of pictures of different scenes, of different settings, with different focal points, with all kinds of different parameters. But somehow you have to go through all of those images to select the best of the best, the creme de la creme. It's the same thing in astrophotography. We take literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of subs, but not all subs are created equal. And there's a way that we can, if you use Nina, we can leverage Nina to help us in the culling process. Nina has the ability to name subs as Nina saves them out. And we can input into that name certain particular metrics that we can use to help us cull through our image. So if you use Nina and you want to help improve your culling ability so that way you end up with better stacks resulting in better images, then stay tuned and see how. Hi, I'm Dave of Urban Astro, and today I want to show you a quick and easy way that you can use Nina to help you in the culling process. And part of that is to go in and set up the file naming structure that will allow you to quickly go through all of your images, all of your subs that you've spent all night taking, and to be able to just eliminate those that do not meet your you first open up into Nina, you're going to come to this particular page here, which is just your general equipment page. Over here on this side here is your menu options, and then here's like a sub-menu of options. And so you want to come down here to the options tab, right there, and then you want to go over to imaging. And when you go over here to imaging, you'll see that you can name your file structure. And, file, and naming files is very, very important because we can put particular kinds of metrics into those files. And by putting metrics into those files, we're able to then quickly scan through our file list and immediately eliminate those that don't meet the cut. And there's three metrics that I put in all of my files, in the names of those files. And the metrics that I use is RMS and arc seconds, because that tells me how good the guiding is. Was the guiding on point, or was the guiding significantly off? If the guiding is significantly off, I want to get rid of that file. I don't need that file. It means that it's blurry. It means that it's fuzzy. It means that I'm not going to get a good, sharp image. The other thing that I look for is HFR. How in focus is the image? If the HFR is way off, if my typical HFR is like 216, 2.16, and I find a file is now suddenly I get a couple images or a series of images that are like 4.0 and then it goes back down to like 2.5, I want to get rid of those images that had the high HFR because the higher the HFR, the more fuzzy it is that the image is. And then the other thing that I look for is star count. Um, if you have a low star count image, then what ends up happening is that you don't have a good, crisp, sharp image. Typically, this happens when you're on either side of the horizon. If you're um, shooting, a, shooting an object that's just rising, you're going through so much atmosphere, so much murk, so much light pollution, or on the other side, as, as the object is setting, you're going through so much light pollution, so much murk, that what ends up happening is you get distorted images, you get images that are not clear, you get images that are indeed fuzzy. And so by using these three metrics in your naming of your files, RMS, HFR, and STARS, you can then cull through your images incredibly fast and just get rid of those that don't meet your particular criteria. So here you can see is some images that I have captured of the Lobster Claw Nebula, um, SHT-157, took this on Christmas Eve 
And you notice that all my files have certain kinds of data in them. The, the first thing here is, is what filter that I use. In this particular case, I use a hydrogen filter. Um, and then you'll see some oxygen there, and you see some sulfur there. And then you have an RMS. And for me, anything under one RMS is a keeper. Anything that's over one RMS, I get rid of. Now, my image scale is 1.56, which is perfectly fine. But I find that if I can restrict myself to images that are under one second of RMS error, that I end up getting sharper pictures. And that's just my experience. Your experience may vary. You may want to keep anything that goes up to 1.56 RMS. And that would be perfectly fine based on what your particular image scale is. I just have more exacting uh, requirements than that. Uh, the other thing that I look at here is my HFR value. If my HFR values have been averaging about like here, like 2.2, and then suddenly it jumps up to like 4 or 5, and then jumps back down because of an auto uh, refocusing sequence, then I know that those that are in the four and fives are probably not viable images because they're going to be fuzzy. They're out of focus. They're not sharp. I don't want to use those images. Even if the RMS was great, I don't want to use those images. And so those images automatically get deleted. The other criteria that I look at is the number of stars. As the object is near to the horizon on either side, either rising or setting, you have more atmosphere that you have to go through. And for me, in a borderlight sky, I have a lot of murk that I have to go through, a lot of light pollution that I have to go through. And so I find that typically images where I have a low star count also tend to be images that have a lot of gradients to them and are images that I don't get good nebulosity. And for me, those images just end up, if you will, just bringing down um, my stacked images and makes them less quality. And, and I've come to find that if I can prune those out, those that have a low um, star count, then I end up getting better quality um, stacks. And that's really kind of what you're after here. So what I look for here is I look for anything um, that is significantly lower than what appears to be kind of the average. Now, it looks like I've already kind of called through this because I'm looking through here and I'm not seeing anything that I would get rid of. And my guess is that I probably have already called through this. So let me go find one that would, that I probably have not called through. Let me go over here. This is the Heart and Soul Nebula complex. I did some stacks here. Yeah, we got a lot more images here. So let me go through here. Let me view this by a list just to show you quickly. And you see like we got some here that we're up to like 1400. This is blue. So blue is up to 1400. I did um, uh, looks like I did uh, RGB and then H L R G B and then HSO. And so blue stars uh, here, we got one that is under a thousand stars, under a thousand stars, over a thousand stars. Look at this one, 528 stars, uh, 575 stars, 740 stars, 1509 stars, 600 stars, 700 stars. So these ones that are under a thousand, I would definitely not use in my stacking. I would actually would delete them and I would eliminate them because they are probably images, subs that were taken as the object was closer to the horizon. And so there's more light pollution that I have to go through. And therefore, the quality of the actual capture is significantly degraded. The other thing that I would look for here, again, is my RMS errors. And my RMS errors are looking pretty good, 0.4, 0.5. Uh, we got up to 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.3 uh, for the green. So we're looking pretty good for RMS. And then the other thing I would look for is HFRs. I would look for HFRs that somehow just jumped up. Um, and I don't see anything here that jumped up. And so it looks like that for me, in this particular image stack, if I was to stack these images and create um, um, Nonlinear images that I can bring into um, Pix Insight and do some more development work on, 
I would be eliminating like this one here 381 stars the one before it was 1023 stars and the next one is 893 1171 which tells me that there probably was a cloud coming through that if I was to open up that particular image it's probably got a cloud in it or it was low on the horizon and just so much light pollution that we're going through that it just basically washes out those stars and if it's going to wash out pinpoints of light stars which are the brightest thing in the sky it's going to wash out all of your nebulosity you don't want that to be included in your stack because it's just going to degrade your signal the goal here is to get as much signal and good signal as you possibly can in your image stack so that when you bring your images into PixInsight or you bring your images into Photoshop, you get the best possible subs to get the best possible images. So this is the process of culling. This is how you can use Nina to help you in your culling process. And all astrophotographers should be going through all of their subs and culling them because the more bad subs that you have, the more subs where there's less signal, the more degraded your final nonlinear stack is going to be. And you really want a good, strong signal in your stacking so that way when you process your images in either PixInsight or Photoshop, you end up with an image that you are proud of, an image that you're excited about, an image that you definitely want to share with others. So if you found this at all helpful, just please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell and you'll get um, notified when I put out another video. And until next time, clear skies and happy guiding.